Welcome back to the channel. So a number of you had asked us to try to make a brine shrimp ecosphere, and that's what we're gonna do in this, today's video. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is make a small hatchery for the brine shrimp. All I'm really doing here is using some water that's been treated with aquarium salt, putting that into a container. I cut some holes in the lid of this container in order to put an air, uh, an air tube into it. And then I'm going to put an air tube down to the bottom of it, aerate the water and add the brine shrimp eggs. Now, the reason why you need the aeration is it helps keep those eggs suspended in the water. Otherwise, they'll kind of just float on top and they really don't have as good of a chance of hatching if they're not constantly being rotated through the water itself. Another thing I kind of wanted to mess around with the idea of was trying to see if I can get moss to grow in salt water. Now I've grown this moss aquatically in other experiments, but I've never tried it in salt water. So I was kind of curious to see if it would actually work. I know for the most part, salt water does inhibit photosynthesis in a lot of plants. So there's a very good chance that this moss isn't actually going to work, but I'm taking the same water that I was using for the brine shrimp and I'm going to be submerging it in that. And I'm going to be setting up a time lapse so that we can see over a period of time if this moss will actually grow. What I'm hoping is if I can get the moss to grow, I might try it with other types. And if it does work with other types, it might be an option for people trying to make ecospheres, depending on if they can get their moss to grow in the salt water or not. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put together the ecosphere for the brine shrimp, or at least our attempt at it. Um, I'm gonna put some gravel on the bottom. It's not really that you need it, but um, <laughs> I like the way it looks. So I'm gonna wind up putting that in there. I have rinsed the gravel off, so that way hopefully it doesn't cloudy up the water or anything. Now this is uh, the same salt water that was treated before, so I'm just using it to get the last of the gravel out of this. Because I just rinsed them off, they were it was sticking to the container. All right, so I have the gravel in there. I've got plenty of water set up, and this is this is the culture of the brine shrimp after. What? I think it's about two, two to three days now. We've had this culture of brine shrimp growing and there is a lot in there. And they, they definitely are attracted to light. So if I put a light source on one side of it, you can see them all swarm towards one side. So that's really neat. So I'm gonna wind up taking, not all of this, but I'm gonna take a good portion of it. I'm gonna pour it into here. But first we're also going to put in the macro algae that we had got from a local fish store. You might not be able to really go gather this necessarily. We to, our, to my knowledge, we can't gather it locally really. So we had to go to a fish store and actually buy this. We're trying to work on a way that we can do the ecosphere without having to buy a specific plant like this, but we're not sure. We haven't quite dialed that one in yet. Now the great part is the water that came with it came from a very well established um, tank already at the fish store. So. We're gonna make sure to keep using that water that came with it also. And also on a plus side, because the consistency of this, it makes it easy to pour in water without disturbing the bottom. So that's nice. Next, I'm going to add probably about half of this brine shrimp thing. There's, it's less than one liter. It's a one liter bottle, but I'm gonna add in less than half of this. So there, there is definitely a, a, there's no shortage of brine shrimp in there. There's quite a lot in there. And we had found some stuff already living in this anyways. When we initially got it, we actually found a brittle starfish in there, but uh, brittle starfish definitely has, it's gonna get much larger than this tank could ever support. And it also, it's care, it wouldn't be adequate for this container. So we're working on either, we're either gonna drive it back to the fish store or someone else is going to take care of it. So that's, that's gonna be how we set it up. Um, I know there's other things that we probably could do to it, and I'm leaving quite a bit of an air gap on here. I know that there's a fair bit of water um, that I could continue to add into it, but for now, I think we're gonna, we're gonna go with this and see how things go. Um, 
we definitely don't want to shortchange it on how much air is in there. I personally really do like these jars in particular. Um, they're called Fido jars. And the nice thing about them is a lot of people use them for like canning and fermenting, but they have a wonderful gasket on top of them. It makes it very easy to create a nice airtight seal. And none of this metal that's on the outside is exposed to what's on the inside. So you shouldn't have to worry about the metal rusting or creating your own airtight seal. Simply flipping a uh, latch like that and you've got an airtight seal. Now that the ecosphere is made, all we have to do is wait and see how it does. Hopefully after we sealed it up, it continues to do good. One of the other projects we are currently working on is we're taking a huge section of our backyard. We're tearing up the grass that's already there and we're preparing it to try to grow a ton of moss in that area. So we're really excited to show you guys a video when we get that project done. 